My guest today is Gary Lasada, a former board member at Tarrant Appraisal District. We're here to talk about the merits of expanding TAD's board from five to seven members, which is something that a lot of reform-minded folks are talking about today. Uh, but before we do that, uh, Gary, you served on the board for two years. Um, everyone interacts with TAD, whether they know it or not. But remind us very quickly about this government group. Here's the confusion about TAD. TAD only sets the appraisal. Mm -hmm. They don't set the tax. There you go. That's done by the taxing entities. Mm -hmm. And then they are given the certified role uh, on or after closest to July 25th mm -hmm. each year. And then they build their budget based on what they think the values are okay. of property. And that okay. would be residential. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be commercial, business, personal property, that type of thing. Then they set the tax rate. The, the The confusion is, is I also spent six years on the appraisal review mm -hmm. board, mm -hmm. and the confusion that I I heard time after time after time at, uh, as a board member was that people would come in and say, "You are setting my taxes too high." No, they never set the taxes. Mm -hmm. All they did was set appraised value. So that's what it does. Mm -hmm. It sets appraised value. Unfortunately. It's a mass appraisal system, so it's a very hit and miss and not accurate mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, <clears throat> as many as, I want to say a couple of years ago, 180,000 protests yeah. were filed because they said your values are too high. And then the taxing entities set their tax rate, and basically you get an increase. So mm -hmm. let me tell you a real important thing. The taxing entities, school districts, and in particular cities, will tell you that we have not had a tax increase or set a tax increase in 10 years. That's somewhat accurate, but misleading hmm. because they can leave the tax rate the same hmm. as it was for 10 years and claim they've never had an increase. But if the proper property values yeah. go up, that's an increase. It's, okay. built in. it's inherent. So there, there's a conflict there. So that's sort of the, okay, in a nutshell. It's a great overview. So the current uh, board consists of five members. Uh, before we talk about the merits of expanding the board, uh, remind us what are some of the, the problems with the current board setup? Basically is geared towards taking care of what I would call the power broker entities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they would be the larger entities like Arlington City, Arlington ISD, Fort mm. Worth City, Fort Worth ISD, and Commissioner's Court. Yeah, Tarrant and, County. Uh, and the uh, Tarrant County College. So they get a very large number of a voting block moving towards 5,000 votes, and they control a lot of those votes mm -hmm. and determine who they will put on the board. Yeah. And so if you've got five members, and you have eight or 10 agencies, but maybe seven, seven, 73 taxing entities, that eight or 10 control the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not what I consider to be fair and equitable. Mm -hmm. If you expand the board, for instance, let me give you some, for instance, right now, Arlington ISD has 435 votes, Fort Worth City has, 610 Fort Worth ISD has 600, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Now, same thing, uh, last go round on the votes two years ago, Dow Worthington Gardens, West Worth, Pantigo, Edgecliff Village, Lakeside, and Blue Mound have zero votes. Wow. So, if you want an argument to be made of taxation without representation, there's your argument. Mm -hmm. You expand the vote, and then this proposal that's floating around basically will expand the board by two votes. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, the additional two members will be elected at large with every entity just having one, uh, one vote. Wow. So that, in effect, levels the playing field so that there is representation uh, by these smaller entities that I just outline to you. That's sort of a mm. nutshell. 
That's interesting. It reminds me a little bit of how we have like the representatives and the senators. Each state gets two senators, no matter how small they are. They have an invested, uh, they have a vote rather. They're, so they're invested in the system. So what are the benefits? We'll see more representation from these um, smaller tax entities. I assume they'll feel more um, involved in the process. They're actually being, you know, but what are all the benefits that are going to come if we can kind of just outline those? I don't know. Historically, I'm just giving you a while. Yeah, history. sure. Let's just, you know, try to see and think about, you know, what are some of the good things that could happen if this, if this happens? Well, there hasn't been any real, um, and, and, and I use this term loosely, but there hasn't been a whole lot of equity on the board. Mm -hmm. And by expanding the vote, the vote to uh, include two more at large, there's a uh, probably a more likelihood of getting individuals of color on the board. Mm -hmm. For one, okay. Uh, that's one. Mm -hmm. Two is that the entities that currently have zero votes mm -hmm. have nobody to go to or hold up, uh, accountable yeah. uh, uh, to represent them. There you go. The tax code as it's written says that if you as a tax entity are, are unhappy with your board representation or the board member that you voted for, you can initiate a recall. Mm -hmm. That recall just recently occurred by a couple of entities regarding Catherine Wildman. The, sm the smaller entities, entities with zero votes have no ability to recall anybody because they yeah. have no vote. Gotcha. If, if everything goes to one, then any one of those entities could vote for a recall, and then it, uh, and then it goes to all the entities for a vote. So mm -hmm. that's a positive thing, because I'm pretty sure a lot of these entities are unhappy that they don't have any input. Now, l l let me say this: it's a little self-serving, but I'll say it anyway. Go ahead. Some of these, some of the board members feel that they need to represent their community first and not represent countywide. Mm -hmm. That was never my mantra. When I was on the board, mm -hmm. uh, I went to, I don't know, 23 entities and got their votes, maybe more. And my pitch was, I vote and I represent everybody in Tarrant County, regardless of how many votes you have. If I only get 20 votes from your city, say, mm -hmm. uh, and and I and there are 250 votes uh, given to somebody else from another city, I still represent you as as well as the 250 votes. Mm -hmm. So I spread it out all over the the county. That's the way I think it should be. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should be restricted to just the power brokers that determine outcomes. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll add one because we've worked together on news stories before. Um, a lot of these uh, board members are, are picked through a lot of uh, backdoor dealing for these big establishment groups. And if you give everyone a vote, it's, it's nearly impossible to uh, manipulate that system, right? It seems like it's, it's just going to be a more fair and you might get some board members who are outsiders who aren't beholden to, you know, the way things have, have traditionally been done at TAD. So I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Um, I, I'll say that um, we, we have a mutual friend um, who's working to get this on the commissioner's court agenda. Um, so this is something that's that is moving forward um, and it's being pushed uh, pr pretty hard by a lot of folks. What are you hearing um, from other uh, former colleagues or other folks who are uh, following Tad as, as far as you know their support for this idea? Um, what's the feedback been from the community? I have not heard anything negative from mm -hmm. any of my contacts. Okay. Uh, I've heard, and, and these are mostly small, smaller entities mm -hmm. that seem to be in favor of this. Okay. Um, probably the biggest concern that they've all shared with me is that um, it takes 70, it takes ratification by 75% of all taxing entities before this can be changed. Okay. Well, that's a stacked deck. I mean, I don't think you could get 75% of the entities to even know what the acronym TAD is. Mm. So, you know, to get them to vote, and I think it was written that way. I, I don't know. the mm -hmm. It's a high bar to pass for sure. 
yeah, I, I think it, it appears on the outside because I don't know the legislative intent. Mm-hmm. It was on the outside that it was set up in a way uh, that made it very, very difficult to change uh, the governing doctrines, which would be um, 75% vote. That's tough to do. Okay. So okay. I, I don't know where it's going to go, but I haven't heard anybody saying that's a bad idea. Gotcha. And it's still very early that this idea is being floated and, um, you know, it may take a period of time for this uh, to happen if it does happen. So, right. Yeah, definitely. Well, Gary, we appreciate your time. Um, you have, um, are you interested in running for office again anytime soon? Do you have any, or what are your plans with, you know, trying to help reform TAD just as a outside watchdog or? I will not be running for TAD again. Okay. Uh, and I made that perfectly clear as recently as yesterday. Oh, okay. But let me say this. I, I've always had a servant's heart. I've always fought for the underdog. And if somebody needed me uh, or a group needed me because they felt that things needed to be worked on, I would accept that nomination and that mm-hmm. vote, and I would gladly serve. I'm just not going to crisscross uh, across the county like yeah, in the sure. last few elections. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm retired. I sort of like it that <laughs> way. I'm not getting any younger. Um, I've given a lot of time to public yeah. service. It's time to go into the sunset. But if somebody needed help, mm-hmm. I would certainly step up at that point. Okay, cool. Well, Gary, uh, we appreciate your time. And um, during your two years as a board member, um, I, I personally appreciate your willingness to always talk to the media. Um, you were really a good supporter of government transparency in, in that regard. And I, I feel like that's kind of slipped away since uh, since you have um, or weren't reelected, rather. But I, we really appreciate your willingness to always talk to the Fourth Weekly and other outlets. So uh, thanks for giving us a nice overview of this uh, proposal. We'll see how it goes. Well, we'll see where it goes and see what kind of momentum it's going to uh, mm. get. It'll get interesting, I'm sure. Oh, it sure will. <laughs> well, anytime you feel free to call me. All right, Gary. Thank you.